One of the important things when you're mixing resins for any type of pouring is that you get a scale. This is just a cheap post office scale. You're going to notice there's some resin on there. All of these scales, when you turn them on, they zero themselves out. So if I put those pliers on there and turn it on, it's going to go to zero. When I lift it off, it's going to be minus 3.8 ounces. Now if I shut this off and turn it on, I guarantee these are going to weigh 3.8 ounces. And they do. So what you do, doesn't matter that you have a little dried resin from a previous job up there like I do. It doesn't matter at all. If I put this container on there, you have to figure 1.8 ounces for the container. This is a perfect 2 to 1 ratio. Okay, You have to mix these 2 to 1 exactly. You can be a hair off, but the closer you are, the better your results. So that's kind of hard to figure out. The trick with these scales, set your container on there. Make sure it's nice and clean. This is just a cut. I use scrap plastic jars for this. Turn it on when it's on there. So now your container zeroed out. So you are not accommodating for this. Now I am going to be making um, 16 ounces of, I'm going to be making a 24 ounce solution. So I'm going to be doing 16 of one and 8 of the other. That's a 2 to 1 ratio. I like to mix the larger of the two first. That way, if I see that I'm really filling up too fast, um, I can actually cut my ratio that way versus uh, the other way. So we're going to go all the way to 16 with this one. I went 16. I actually went just 0.4 over. I don't know if you can see that on the scale. So now what we need to do is we need to take this one and go to one, point, uh, one pound eight ounces point two. So that would be, that would push it to, uh, so we need to go to uh, one pound eight ounces and that needs to go to six. So that is the perfect mixture. This, the nice thing about this is it has a very, this particular one has a long pot life. Uh, 50 minutes or so is the work time. And then you want it to cure overnight. When you mix this stuff, you want to make sure you take a small stick and you want to preferably have something that doesn't have a lot of ridges like this container does. That actually can work against you. But you want to slowly mix this and try not to whip a lot of bubbles into it. This particular brand of stuff right here actually debubbles pretty well. It doesn't bubble up really bad when you uh, when you do your work. So you want to mix this for about a minute or two. I'm finishing this up and it's a good idea to wear gloves when you do this. I'm pretty good at not getting it on my hands. I've done this a lot. I use this resin for other stuff. You're going to notice that I have two other cups here. Ideally you'd want one more container the exact same size. I couldn't find one this big. This is the most important part when dealing with resins. First off, you want to make sure you have clothes that you don't really care about in case you get it on. That's why I'm dressed this way. But you want to take your mixture from this jar and you want to transfer it, pouring it very slowly with a long drop. What this is going to do is mix the resin. It's forcing everything into a fine point and mixing it better. And I'm using two cups because the volume of this is a lot greater than one cup. So we're going to come over here and mix this one and then what you're going to do is when you get to the very end of this you want to pour this right down the middle of the last the last bit of it okay right down the middle this is all the stuff that's stuck to the walls you're not going to be able to perfectly mix everything in this when this hardens tomorrow what i'm going to do is show you this and i'm going to show you the resin left in these containers and show you how these Anything left in these will harden solid. Anything left in here will have something called wet spots. What wet spots are is they're a part of your resin that doesn't mix thoroughly because it was initially spread on the walls and you can't really get it off. So since we're pouring the wall mixtures down, you also want to not you want to use a, uh, a cleaner stick when you come into the second mix. So we're just going to remix these a little bit and there are some bubbles in there that is not really a problem with this back 
version that we're doing. There is a way uh, you can make a, you can put this, you can spin this in a two liter bottle with a drill and make a DIY centrifuge, which I'll show you in a future video, and it forces all the bubbles right down the middle. But if you want, you can actually pour these a little bit more. Not really necessary. The more you pour them, the more you whip more bubbles into it. So we're going to just stop with that. These are mixed really good, by the way. So they were mixed about two minutes in this, and then a couple minutes by themselves. So this will not harden properly. These two will harden properly. We have our solar panel here. You want to make 100% sure that you're very level. So you want to check this. <clears throat> Blow any dust that you can out of there. And then what I like to do with this, I like to start with my very end, and I like to do up, up. A nice high drop right there I like to fill all the corners all the way around we have a total of 40 ounces for this because I am going to go solid with the resin again you want to make sure that it mixes really well The tension of your material to close the gaps on everything. So what I like to do is pick it up and turn it, let it all rush to one side. Use, use a stick to close up any holes that may be there. Just kind of like spread it around like paint. So here is our finished work. You're going to notice that I have this lifted up on a little peg under there and that there is some resin here. As someone who's made this mistake before, I didn't seal this properly on the front. There wasn't enough silicone in there. So the resin has actually run down under the glass and up around, which sucks. But that happens sometimes. So make sure that you seal it really good with that bead of silicone. In other words, you're going to have the mess that I have. Now, if you forget this, if I would have just left, um, the cardboard would have been a permanent fixture to this wooden frame, which is no big deal. I could have just tore the cardboard off and had a really ugly frame in the front. But if you do this to a wooden table, that stuff is impossible to get off. So you're going to have a permanently fixed solar panel there. Here that we lost quite a bit of resin, right up under here that came out of this hole, even though the hole is very, very fine the viscosity of that stuff is so thin that it actually came right through so that is why we were using extra resin i wasted probably an extra six ounces on the table with leaks around the outside so i'm showing you this because i don't want you to make that mistake so it's better that i make it for you there's the mess that i made i'm pretty messy with stuff here's all the extra garbage that we'll have to deal with tomorrow it's a good idea to let just let this stuff sit make sure no little our cats put up so our cat's not going to come over and step in this stuff and drag it all over the place there's no spots if you look at that that's beautiful it's like a lake that is my fresnel uh movie light uses a whopping 60 watts it's got a bulb one of those compact fluorescents in it it's been gutted the 5000 watt bulb's been canned and it just plugs right in there so it hardly pulls any power it still uses the big throw switch ah, so there's some led lighting i'm going to show you in the future video we're going to let this harden and check it out tomorrow so this is the front of the finished panel this is the glass side if we turn it over this is where some of the resin dripped through not a big deal this is some of the spillage that i had and on the back side this looks like a sheet of glass it shows you how well 
this particular resin holds up. Now there is a little trick for front embedding that I'm going to show you in the next video on how to extend the life of these types of resins to get a little bit extra kick out of them, like an extra, uh, so they don't yellow as fast. The layering on this is very thin. You can thicken this if you want. What you would do if you want to do attach a board to this is to let this dry just like it is. That way you get a nice perfectly flat surface. And then what you would do is come in, pour another layer of resin, and attach your board. The next layer would be very thin. You would you could actually just brush it on because you just need the adhesion. You don't need the sealing factor. So this would be more for an aesthetic purpose. So when you look at it, you don't see that white tape show through and it looks like a normal panel. I'm keeping this back clear because I'm going to use this panel to show people how solar panels look. This is the this resin, I, I will have a couple sources on where you can get this. I'm going to post two or three of them, very similar resins, because you can see that this one, here, here's what I was talking about, by the way. If we look at this cup that was mixed thoroughly, the resin on the bottom is solid and clear, okay? No goopiness, no nothing. It is nice and solid. Uh, to do the original mix, even though it's welded down, if I take everything's, <laughs> but... That looks like it's solid, but if I go in there, ah, my hands get all gross now. You see my finger is wet from that. That is the wetting factor. That's where it didn't cure properly because this is your first mixture. So that's all the stuff that ran down off the walls. So if I would have taken this and drizzled it on to like use every bit of this resin instead of wasting that bit right there, there would have been wet goopy spots all over it that would have never dried. So that's why you want to make sure, mix your resin in one, pour it in a second one, and then mix it again with a different stir. You see I have two stirs here. And uh, this stuff, by the way, is perfect for countertops. You notice there's no bubbles. If you see other people that have used stuff like the $45 can um, for solar panels, they have huge bubbles because that stuff has a very thick viscosity. This, you want to do this right before, right before you go in for the night let it set up overnight another thing you can do from this point here these junctions should actually be welded in place a little bit better so you can build a small dam here with a piece of wood just a small little and pour more resin there to, to fill these in these actually got in there pretty good they're uh, nice and tight there's no uh, everything sealed so I might do a little bit more there but there is a couple areas where the resin slipped through that is because these were broken cells and there's were holes in the actual cells that went all the way through so if you use you can see i don't know if you can see the hole right there but right there where there's a resin spot there's a hole so it is just the way that it is that's the disadvantage of using broken cells uh, a full perfect cell is not going to do that. I'm your host Dan Rojas. Thank you for watching and enjoy our videos.